Alrighty. It's time for ink transfer drawing with Mark Zimmerman. My name is Mark Zimmerman. I am a visiting artist at Sanford. Brought to you by the Sanford Arts. And all I'm doing right now is evening a coat of ink out on a sheet of plexiglass, which is going to let me do an ink transfer drawing. So all I need to do is drop a sheet of paper on top of that ink. Sounds a little goofy, doesn't it? And then I'm going to draw and rub on the back of that, transferring ink to the front, which is face down right now. And then I'll finish it with just a little splash of watercolor. And we will have ourselves a posk flower, because I'm feeling like drawing a posk flower. I've got a photograph of a posk flower. The ink is inside that um, rectangle of tape, and I, I can feel the edge of that tape. So I'm going to poke my pen up into that corner and drag it along the edge of that tape. That tells me where my ink is, that's where I need to draw. What I do outside the ink area doesn't show much at all. So, I'm going to just kind of almost measure something here because I'm looking at a shape. It's an easy shape to, to recognize, it's basically a circle. But I kind of measured it because I wanted to see how big it was. And then I'm going to working on the center of a posk flower. Had to pick a fast flower. Boy, there's a lot, of, a lot of little whatever these are in the center of a flower. I probably should know what those are, shouldn't I? Somehow I think my biology teacher would be unimpressed by my ability to forget what I learned. So, just sort of loosely suggesting that we have all that stuff in the center of this flower. There's other stuff going on right in the center. See if I can. Suggest that it's very delicate, so and the transfer lines are actually anything but delicate, they're a little fuzzy, fat. So I'm going to kind of stay out of that center now for the petals. There's one. A few little lines come up that way. A few little lines running down in here too. One petal. Let's 
let's look at another. Let's skip over to another. That was simple. And quite a bit of veining. Whoa. Stay in the lines, Mark. Quite a bit of veining here. And let's jump over to this pedal. It's in front of the others, so I'm going to draw it first. One last pedal, and I guess I see a couple of little, I think they're probably bracks. Quite a bit of veining here. I might turn this so I can turn my picture too so I know what I'm doing. Go back to I think what is right side up on here. Here's the photo I'm looking at. There are some bracks, like I said. They come down in here. There are little greenish parts and they're kind of fuzzy. So I'm going to draw a kind of not a real solid line there and not a real solid line here. And here, and here. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe I come back and I add just a touch of value, dark and light, by um, touching the back of the paper. So there's a little shadow here. And 
and a little bit, I better leave that alone. I can't get my finger in there. Um, I'll try it. No, I'll try it. I'll try it with my pinky. Yeah, it might have gotten in there. Might, might have, might have been outside the lines too. Okay, I think the other thing I'm going to do is put just a little weight at the bottom of the drawing, visual weight. Just put a shadow in down in here. Now, I can peek, see what I've got. I can't subtract, I can't erase. I'm stuck with everything I've done. But I can, I think I'm all right. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna soften that. And that. And I think I got it. So I'm gonna get the ink out of here and switch to watercolor. You'll notice that it comes out backwards. That's part of the joy of ink transfer drawing is when you're all done, it's backwards, like it or not. Just get a little room here and splash some paint on this. So. Uh-huh. Boy, it's very blue. Stir some blue paint up here. And yeah. Okay. I think of posks as more violet, but in this photo they're very blue. And they get pretty light as they come up in here. So in watercolor, that means you add water to your paint. And there's a little violet to it down in here. I'm going to come back while it's still wet and let that violet bleed into the blue some. Rinse my brush. Take some more blue. A little more blue. Gets darker over here. Doesn't get that dark though. <laughs> there we go. Add a little water, lightens it up. And I think you can come back with just a touch of purple again. Kind of add some shadows, deepen some shadows. Mostly up in here. Beautiful blue violet that a pot flower has. Rinse my brush a little bit. Try a little more blue, darker, and more violet in here. And lighter, yeah, lighter out here on this edge.
dry a little of that off and just give it a touch. Ooh, that's too much. I can pick it up with my brush too. I just dried my brush off and then I'm going to pick it up. See how dark my purple is? I think we're okay. purple in my brush I think I'll just bring it down in here got a pretty good shadow down in there I like going from blue to adding the purple to the blue better than the blue to the purple. Kind of theoretically it's all the same, but in practice it makes a bit of a difference. Put some darker blue down, come back with some watery blue. See if I can get a little purple in here too. Pedal to go. So this is super light out in here. So I stuck my brush in the yellow and when it was kind of loaded and wouldn't hold much more, I stuck it in the green. There we go. Let's give that yellow a little stir this time. Just let that brush dance around here and we'll have 
There's a little bit in the center there that's going to stay whitish, so I'm going to leave that alone. I don't have any white paint, but I can leave it white by just leaving the paper alone. good. Stir up some orange. See how dark that orange is. Should be okay. Now, just some of these little Get that kind of to sparkle a little bit with some nice bright orange. Uh, I think I'm going to come back with a. Actually, I'm going to come back with a tiny brush. <laughs> Let me switch brushes here. I'm going to do something really little. I'm going to put a tiny bit of a shadow on these bracks. Just a little bit of blue. Now when I see these things, they're always on the forest floor. And I always think of them kind of coming up out of the pine needles. So I'm going to I'm going to stir up some burnt sienna and give that background just a nice, even, uninteresting coat. <laughs> I want it to be uninteresting because I don't want to take away from the posk flower. So I'm going to just drag that around there. I just picked up a little water to make my burnt sienna a little lighter. A little more water. A little lighter yet. While I have light burnt sienna in here, I'm going to come up in here. I might pick up a little bit of this darker stuff. Ah! Way outside my line. sign them in pencil. I'm going to turn it so I can sign right side up. I've been drawing sideways and for a while I was drawing sideways and backwards. We'll call it Posk Flower. Sign it. Zimmerman, date it, 2020, and that should be sitting somewhere near where you're watching this video, and if it's the one you kind of like, you can take it home. Hope you enjoyed watching. I know I sure uh, had a little bit of fun drawing a posk flower, so until next time.